my presentation is about a tool that, is, that has been there for more than 10 years. Uh, and I'm not going to talk about what it does, but how it's being used, uh, what we learned with regard to the uh, implementation of the tool uh, and some, some uh, success factors and, and failures in the use of the tool. So maybe that's something for you also to learn to in the startup with this new, uh, this new tool. I think this was also uh, mentioned in the opening uh, session, this, but just to give an idea uh, of the, the situation regarding the use of chemical substances. In the Netherlands, I think about uh, one in three companies uh, uses these kind of chemical substances, and one in four persons are potentially being exposed to these chemicals. Uh, I don't remember the, the numbers that were mentioned in the opening session, but in the Netherlands, there's about 1,900 19, uh, work-related deaths each year uh, by hazardous substances. So the issue is quite, quite a large issue to, to uh, take into account. In Europe, the numbers are still higher. And other point is, what we see is that uh, the information provided on the uh, safety data sheet uh, is, is very uh, complex and often hard to interpret for uh, small and medium enterprises. I think it was also mentioned before. That's, that's an issue that, that companies uh, are faced with when they try to do their chemical uh, risk assessment. But we also see in the Netherlands that, that companies are uh, insufficiently aware of the various risks that are involved. They often lack uh, expertise uh, in performing a risk assessment. They often don't know how to start it up or don't have the, the resources to do it in an uh, adequate uh, way. And they often get lost in the complex uh, substance legislation. For instance, you now have the, the Dutch uh, uh, labor legislation and also the REACH legislation. It's two different legislations and somehow they have to interact. And we see companies struggle uh, with the complexity of those two uh, legislations and how to match uh, these legislations. So what we have also seen over the past years, and it's still going on with this new, new uh, French tool, Different tools are, uh, have been developed over the years. I think maybe it started with the, the Koch Essentials, uh, but there are now quite some tools available, uh, some uh, embedded within legislation, like the tools that can be used under the REACH uh, legislation, but also other tools like the ones that we heard about in, in uh, Canada, um, which you can also use to, to do your risk uh, assessment and to help you to, to uh, yeah, establish and get a grip on the exposure levels that, that workers can be exposed to. Uh, these tools can be uh, what we call qualitative, so it gives you a risk score. Uh, they also can be uh, quantitative, give you a number in milligrams per cube that you can compare to a uh, limit value. And often these tools intend to be self-explaining. And in my presentation, I think also in practice, you will see that it's not always the case. So tools are being developed, they are placed on the internet, or they can be downloaded for free, then users are going to use them, but the level of self-explaining and the way the tools are being used is not always uh, how it should be. So uh, coming from a background from, from Software Manager, we were wondering, okay, uh, we see in practice that tools are not always being used, very good. So what, what would be needed uh, for a successful implementation of a tool within companies? Uh, what, what are the things that, that help companies to, to, um, to get it done? And what are barriers for them that, that pr uh, prevent them to, to do the chemical risk assessment? I think one of the uh, nice examples is the E-Team e -team project. Uh, Marty van Tonger will uh, give a presentation later this afternoon on this uh, topic. But they also evaluated these tools and also looked at how tools are being used but also what is the, the variation in the use between uh, the different users. And then you see a large variation in how tools are being used, but also in the outcomes of tools. So we were going to look at, okay, uh, what is needed for companies to, to make it happen, to, to do a good risk assessment, and to have a good solid chemical risk management in practice. So we started a large uh, project, which was uh, funded by the Dutch organization uh, Zon MW. We call it Implementation Project uh, Stoffer Manager. I think you can do it for, for every tool, uh, but because we were coming from the background from Stoffer Manager, uh, we did this specifically for Stoffer Manager. There were three organizations involved, TNO, uh, ArboUni, 
uh, where I was working at uh, that time, and uh, EY. And we had five uh, trainers, uh, all with an occupational hygiene uh, background, uh, especially specialized in chemical risk management. And we recruited 45 companies that could cooperate in this project. And we sought the cooperation with uh, two sectors, uh, the paint industry and the uh, rubber industry. And what we did was a, a one and a half year project in which we provided uh, training, support, and specific information for them to do their chemical risk management. So a little bit about Stoffer Manager. Uh, it's available since uh, 2003, so about 12 years now. And since 2014, owned by Cosanta. So the, the Dutch Ministry of Social Affairs, who started up the tool, uh, has, has given it over uh, to the markets. So we're now trying to, uh, to uh, sustainably develop Stoffer Manager. Soft manager is accepted uh, both on the reach regulation and by the Dutch Labour Inspectorate. So it means that when you use Stoffe Manager uh, and you have a number of milligrams per cube and you compare it with a uh, limit value uh, and you're below the limit value, that outcome is accepted as a, uh, as a good risk assessment. I'm not sure. It, has somebody used Stoffe Manager? I see. Ooh. Maybe we should, we should translate it in French. <laughs> that, that, might, that might help, maybe. OK. But then, of course, after today, you've heard of Stoffer Manager. And might the, the, the French tool not work? You could consider using Stoffer Manager. OK, back to the project. This was the uh, project outline. Uh, we we uh, identified three uh, stages, pre-implementation, then the implementation or the intervention phase, and afterwards, the post-implementation phase. And I will briefly go by these uh, different phases. This is the pre-implementation. So what we did was we, we developed what we called the uh, Stoffe Manager Evolutionary Implementation Ladder, divided into seven uh, steps. And it's, uh, the steps are going from uh, raising awareness, so that companies are getting an idea of what chemical substances are, where to find information, how to build uh, a register, uh, but how to start uh, the risk prioritization towards the, the seventh step. Uh, it's called it anchor, but it's like uh, sustainable, a sustainable chemical substance management with a plan, do, check, act uh, chain, uh, management of change procedures. So it's, it's a stepwise approach, helping companies to improve their chemical management. Uh, chemical management. Our goal was every company should at least uh, improve one step on this ladder. So what we did was in the pre-implementation phase is a phone interview. All 45 companies were interviewed with a survey, with a questionnaire to identify on which step on the ladder uh, they were at the beginning of the project. So this is the outcome. Uh, at the beginning, about 60% of the companies were at step one and step two. So that's at the level of, okay, I have a register, I know something about chemical substances, but I haven't started with risk prioritization. I haven't started with doing uh, measurements or doing uh, quantitative exposure estimates. Uh, so it's, it's really at the beginning of the, um, of the ladder. Then we started the implementation and intervention phase. So what we provided was uh, four uh, joint uh, meetings in the Netherlands, where we provided specific training and information. So the group was divided into uh, the different uh, steps. So if, if a company was at level one or two, it was in one group, uh, level three and four in one group. So we provided specific information to the point where the company was on the ladder. They got some homework. They also got the opportunity to be visited by one of the coaches, one of the trainers. We offered uh, online support at the uh, Stoffe Manager uh, website and also uh, wrote a Stoffe Manager manual. This was the, the homework. Uh, it's, it's in Dutch, sorry. It's, uh, it's the seven steps listed. And per step, you see some uh, small subdivisions. So a company could just go to the website and look at, OK, I, I am in step two at the moment. What are my things to do? Uh, check them if they are finished and move up to the next uh, steps. 
at the uh, company visit, uh, it was uh, only once they could be visited. It was on request by the company. So it could be at the beginning to help them get started, or it could be at the end to, to review the things that they uh, did in the project. That was on the job, specific training, uh, specifically for, for them. What we also did was uh, take with us a, a checklist uh, to identify success factors and failure factors. And also during the project, they could uh, call us, email us, etc. So this is afterwards. So we, we did the, the uh, previously intake, we did the intervention, the four uh, meetings and the, the coach uh, visit. Then afterwards, we again did the, the survey uh, with the telephone interview and the questionnaire. With in, in our minds, every company should at least move one step up this ladder. This is the result. So in blue, again, the beginning of the project, and in red, the end of the project. So what we saw was that almost all companies uh, managed to improve at least one step up the ladder. So this was quite satisfactory. What did we see? Uh, we took the, uh, the checklist with us to the companies at the uh, company visit. Uh, we specifically asked them uh, to, to what, I, what, what those professionals saw as the main barriers and the main uh, the success factors. These are barriers they identified. So what you see in a company, there's often uh, one person responsible for the uh, health and safety um, management. Some organizations have a whole staff department. Uh, but the organizations that took part in this study were more the, the small, medium and small enterprises. Uh, time investment is one of the main reasons I, I identify. It's a lot of work if you want to do it in a structured uh, way, uh, to do all the risk assessments, to do the inventory, to keep your register uh, up to date. Also the, the unavailability of, of data, the material safety data sheet is often not so uh, very uh, rich in, in data. For instance, uh, vapor pressures, uh, limit values, uh, the dustiness of a product is often uh, lacking. Internal support was sometimes an issue. Uh, they didn't get the information from their uh, purchase department, or they didn't get information from the, the work floor. So to, to get the thing rolling into the organization was sometimes uh, difficult to, uh, to achieve. A missing manual for staff and manager was mentioned. So if you're going to start the new French tool, uh, a tip, provide a good manual. It really helps companies to, to start up. And also mentioned missing occupational hygiene knowledge. So the person involved in the company uh, often came from a safety expert uh, background or sometimes from, from a technical background, but the specific knowledge on occupational hygiene in relation to chemical <coughs> management was often lacking. There were also some success factors uh, again here, motivated health, safety, environment, professional. If the people, if the, the man or uh, woman at the job um, um, isn't motivated, it's not going to work. So then you can provide a tool, uh, you can provide it for free, you can uh, charge it 10,000 euros, it doesn't matter. If there's no one motivated in the company, it's not going to work. So that's crucial. Uh, some external drivers might, might help. Uh, for instance, an, an audit by a big client. Uh, in the Netherlands, we have a, the labor inspectorate, which is very active, uh, very actively going to companies and uh, asking them questions in this uh, regard. So that, that always, that also helps. Uh, what they also say is that Stop Manager is accepted as a valid tool that, that helps them to also go and use it uh, because they know, okay, if I uh, apply the tool, uh, I can finish my risk assessment and it is accepted. Management support, uh, both in, uh, in time but also in, in money, is very important. And here also the occupational hygiene knowledge is very, uh, very important. Um, I think our philosophy with Stoffer Manager is that companies should be able to do it by themselves. Uh, but, you, but you need some, some knowledge of what the tool does and how to interpret the result. In the end, everybody can get a result out of it, uh, but how you should interpret it and work with a tool within the, the domain where it's meant for, it's very, very crucial to, um, to, to know. So eventually, about 80% of the companies um, 
identified that they were better equipped in using and implementing Stuffer Manager. And they told us that live meetings were uh, best uh, appreciated, uh, better than the online support that we, that we offered at the, the help desk. <coughs> so the, the online network was least, uh, least valued. So in summary, uh, I think active training and support really helps. Um, and it's really something that we, from our profession, uh, could assist companies with uh, to, to, to get along with them, to see, okay, where are you standing now? And what are the next steps for you to take to do your chemical risk management? Uh, training in models helps also to, to reduce the mistakes that are being made. You, you just see it happen when you go to a company and they use software manager that they have some assumptions on how the tool should work, and it's often different from uh, how it's intended to be. Uh, a tool, in this case, Stuff Manager, provides structure and direction. This could also be true for other tools, because it helps companies to, to uh, in a structured way, uh, do their chemical risk management. And uh, HSE, professional, uh, the management support and time are very important uh, parameters. So there was a fourth meeting there we uh, handed out certificates to these uh, people, to these companies. So they uh, graduated from our software manager implementation uh, projects. Okay, thanks.